Jr. Joanne Carter Dartmouth, exhibited by Brayton Ryland and Camden Nearman of Brownstown, Indiana. Entry 2899 was 10th. Entry 2907 placed 6th. Entry 2908 was 9th. And 2909 placed 7th. Entry 2910, Cutting Edge F. Farrow, placed 2nd and was also the bred and owned winner of the class, exhibited by Ken Main and Kenny Joe Mannion of Kopaki, New York. Entry 2913 was 5th. Entry 2914 placed 8th. And entry 2916 was the second junior, All Glow Carter Popsicle, exhibited by Abigail R. Stoltzfus of Berlin, Pennsylvania. Entering the show ring now is the five year old Brown Swiss Cow class. Awards in this class are generously sponsored by the following The first place award is presented by Royal Hill Swiss. Don Graft of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Presenting the bread and owned award in this class is M and M Swiss, Matt, Megan, Jacob, and Levi Stussel of Alma Center, Wisconsin. The production award in this class will be presented by World Dairy Expo. And the best uttered cow will receive a rosette courtesy of the Cattle Connection of Steins, the Netherlands. Presenting the Junior Award for this five-year-old Brown Swiss Cow class is Starry Night Dairy, Gerald Emily Kizzy and Tristan Chwala of Jefferson, Wisconsin.
As was made mention in the ring just now, with the acknowledgement of the judges and contributions of individuals, as well as a warm welcome to our World Brown Swiss Conference attendees, it truly is the people that make World Dairy Expo the special gathering that it is, not to discount the beautiful, beautiful animals circling in the ring before us. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the royalty helping with our International Brown Swiss show today. If you could please stand and wave when I announce your names. First, I'd like to introduce Quincy Johnson. She serves as our Wisconsin Brown Swiss Queen. She's being assisted with awards today by Regina Dilger, who serves as the Brown Swiss Queen of Germany. <laughs> Welcome. We'd also like to recognize Emma Carlisle. Emma serves as the Illinois Swiss Miss. And Erin Armitage, the National Brown Swiss Ambassador. Thank you, ladies, for your assistance with presenting these prestigious awards today. We'd also like to thank our Brown Swiss Association representatives. They include Norm Magnuson, Leonard Johnson, Alicia Horn, and Kaylin Miller. Dave Bollig serves as the superintendent of our Brown Swiss show, but he goes above and beyond, serving as the overall dairy cattle superintendent of World Dairy Expo's shows as well. Assisting in the ring and helping with our show throughout this two-day International Brown Swiss show were the following individuals. Lee Hag, Katie Palmer, Pat Palmer, Aaron Armitage, Kim Mocha, Steve Dilley, Trigby Olson, Mark Musell, Bob Hagenau, Dave Geitzel, Paige Blair, Robin Smithling, Peggy Coffeen, and Tyler Bullig. And we would be remiss if we didn't also thank our Badger Dairy Club representatives. Those kids put in a hard week going to school and making sure that our World Dairy Expo grounds are kept just so. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Team Swiss, the folks that bring to you the International Brown Swiss Show. Thanks much, everybody. Placings are completed in this Brown Swiss five-year-old cow class. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you our class winners. We'd like to start with a production award winner. She is entry 2936, Bodell Thunder Gemma, exhibited by Fairdale Farm LLC of Worthville, Kentucky. The second junior in the class is entry 2931, Shadow Valley Boss Tilly, exhibited by Amelia Summers of Walton, New York. Third place honors in this class go to entry 2920, Iroquois Acres Total Candy, exhibited by Brian Pacheco of Carmen, California. Second place in the class is entry 2932, Pit Crew WF Twilight ET, exhibited by Beth Nelson and Aaron Johnson of Ettrick, Wisconsin. And in what would seem to be a clean sweep, your winning entry, first place junior, best utter, and bread known in the class is entry 2929, North Kill Creek Groovy, exhibited by Hannah and Mark Balthazar of Burnville, Pennsylvania. Congratulations. Judge DeBruin, your reasons on this class. Well, a popular winner at ringside uh, and a popular winner for me. Uh, I think this cow kind of sorts herself out when it's all said and done pretty easily. I just uh, just love cows that uh, at this stage of the day full of milk and you can still lay your arm up in the seam of this cow. She looks like she could take another four or five hours without flinching. Just a tremendous dairy cow. Uh, it's that depth of seam, that cleanness of bone that she possesses that take her over that big rangy cow coming in second, a big massive dairy cow coming in second. And she goes over the next cow. Uh, uh, first two cows have had four calves. The next cow uh, has had three calves. And uh, I think uh, reproductive efficiency is a place where the show world and the commercial world should intersect. So I always think that there should be some advantage to cows having 
calved four times versus three. That's to take nothing away from the ultra style, uh, beautiful profile cow coming out in third. She goes over the cow uh, following her because of her extreme cleanness, clean bone, femininity, straight lines. This cow coming out in fourth, I moved up a uh, couple different times. When you get behind her, you're just blown away by the width. The width of the rump that naturally translates into a massively wide rear udder. Uh, she's a beautiful profile cow in addition to that. She uses that width of rear udder to go over a, a more open ribbed, uh, longer frame kind of a cow. Uh, cow uh, right in front of me, similar to the cow behind her. Uh, longer made, uh, more open ribbed kinds of cows, but uh, tremendous dairy cows and their udders are tied on tight enough. Tremendous class, congratulations to all the exhibitors.